Hey Beacon, welcome back to your Bounce Back Blueprint community podcast. It's your Bounce Back Guide, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I am so excited to have you here with me this week. You are in for a special treat this week. This week, today kicks off She's Free Week. And that means that you are getting an episode of the podcast each and every day this week, Monday through Friday. I am introducing you to five phenomenal, dynamic, courageous women who have been bold enough to set both themselves and others free by sharing their stories. And I am introducing you to them in an effort to prepare you to do the same. So stay tuned for information all about the She's Free Challenge. But first, it is my pleasure to kick off this week with one of my very, very good friends, um, amazing leader and woman and mom, Tyann Battle. I am so excited to have our first She's Free guest. Um, Ty Ann Battle joining us today. You ladies are in for a real treat. Her uh, professional bio is in the show notes, but I think we do the best at introducing ourselves. So instead of me boohooing and telling you who I believe Ty Ann Battle is, I'm going to let her tell you who exactly she is. Take it away, Ty. Hi, everyone. My name is Tyann Battle. Uh, first off, I would like to say that I am a mother, a sister, and a caring person to those who are open to setting themselves free. I am the founder and executive director of ACH Clear Pathways, which was started in 2010 after the sudden death of my seven-year-old son who passed away due to a congenital heart defect I was unaware of. So that's basically who I am. Um, <clears throat> last but not least, should I say, I should have said this first, Tiff, but I'm a child of God. And without God, I don't know where I would be today, but I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Yes, I was just about to say, Tyann is being very, very modest, as I'm sure you will be able to tell when you read her official bio, but she is certainly a child of God, walking in the spirit and in his likeness every single day. She is touching and changing many lives, transforming the community, just doing a mighty, mighty work. Um, So Ty, of course, This week, She's Free series is all about um, us sharing stories for um, and of women who have been set free by sharing their stories and also in the process are setting others free after having experienced what um, felt like one of your worst setbacks. So let's kind of set the stage for the audience before we talk about um, the loss of Ahmad. Amon, excuse me, let's talk about what life was like for Ty as a mom prior to ACH Clear Pathways and having experienced um, the loss of Amon. Sure. Um, You know, just thinking about my life back then, which was 11 years since I lost Amon, but 19 years he would have been this year. I was that type of uh, person who always had a vision of what I thought my life should look like, right? Mm. I, um, you know, I was from the Hill, born and raised in the projects of Warren Court and Whiteside Road. So growing up in the Hill, I tra- traveled between Center Avenue and Kirkpatrick going from two projects every day from my mother's family to my father's family and um, growing up in that type of environment I always would see my mom and dad go to work but we were still living in you know a deprived neighborhood so when I um, got of age and graduated high school I knew I wanted a little bit more for myself so I knew I wanted to go to school I didn't go to college right after high school I wanted to 
test the water, you know, to see if it was out there because I thought I was grown, you know. Yes. But to say the least, I always had a job. I always had a full-time job. Um, I didn't have any kids until I was in my mid-20s. And at that time, um, I ended up conceiving Amon with his father, who was in the streets. And um, I thought I had my life all in order because, you know, I had this so-called baller. Um, I had a car. I was going to work, I was doing my thing, but then boom, I got pregnant. So now what do I do? Um, so at that time, one of my good friends, she had said, you know, you should apply for Section 8. They're giving out vouchers. So I'm like, they ain't going to give me no voucher. I ain't got no kids. It's just me, you know. She's like, no, you're pregnant. So now you'll be able to get a one-bedroom, right? So I'm like, oh, let me see if I can get me a you know, voucher or whatever. So <laughs> I ended up getting a um, one bedroom approval for the voucher, right? So I knew at that time, okay, now my rent would be affordable. I can find me a nice place. I have this baby I have to take care of. What do I do now? Make a long story short, my son's father ended up going to jail when I was pregnant. Wow. So now it's just me. Okay, Ty, what you going to do now? You just out here pregnant. It's time to go to work, right? So I'm working. I'm taking care of myself. And then I meet um, a lady by the name of Juanita who worked for the Housing Authority City of Pittsburgh. And she said, you know what, young lady, you need to apply for the self-sufficiency program. And I said, oh, what's that? And she said, well, if you pay your rent, They'll match um, whatever your rent is for a goal that you set. It can be buying a car, paying off some debt, or even buying a house. So I said, oh, I'm going to try to buy a house. Wow. Make a long story short, that was the best program anyone on Housing Authority can ever get into because at that time, I don't know if they still have it, but I was able to pay my rent save up they helped me clean my credit and i was able to buy a house and i just knew from that point on that god had something bigger for me because i thought i needed that guy my son's father to help me do these big grand things in life which obviously god had a, a plan for me to do it his way and his way is always the right way and always on time um so at and, point, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say till this day, I am still in that house that I brought um, getting off of housing authority. And it was so, a blessing. So how old was a mom when you bought your house? My baby was five years old. So you are in the mid, you and your prime, you are young, a homeowner doing the thing, listening to what is it? I N D E P E N D right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> having a good time, you know, working your job, taking care of your baby, paying your bills, and mm -hmm. then yep. tragedy strikes. Yes. Um, two years after I brought the house, my baby, um, I was working for child care partnerships. And Amon had a cell phone. He kept calling me, Mom, when you get off work, can I have some company over? It's the weekend. So I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. Well, you know, we give our kids anything. I let them have company. Well, that was the last day he would have company in that house because as they played in my game room, he ended up passing out and overexerting his heart. And uh, my little cousin stayed yelled up to me like, you know, Ty, you need to come down because it's Amon's turn to be it. They were playing it tag. And they told me that he said he was tired. He needs to lay down. He didn't want to be it. That's what they thought, you know. But Which is uh, what you would think, right? When it's somebody's turn. Who, nobody ever wants to be it. Hide, right. go seek, tag, any of that. I don't want to be it. You just want to hide or run. Right. Wow. And when they told me that, I'm just like, oh, well, more play fair, you know. <laughs> but my little cousin, Ashley, God bless her. She's 27 now. But she came up, she said something's wrong. And at that time, she was only 13. 
Okay. He says something's wrong. And I went down there and I seen the position of my baby laying on the floor and I knew something was wrong. And at that time, um, yeah, he had passed on. I didn't know what hit me. Um, but I just remember calling the ambulance. They asked me if I had any heart medicine in the house. And I'm like, no, why are you asking me that? And they were just saying that they think something's wrong with his heart. They're going to get him to Children's Hospital. So we're driving to Children's Hospital. That's when Children's was in Oakland. And when we got there, it wasn't no more than, Tiff, I tell you, I wasn't there 10, 15 minutes before they was coming to tell me I had to say my last goodbyes to my baby. Wow. And it was just the worst day of my life. February 28, 2009 was the worst day of my life. Um, but I just thank God, you know, for bringing me through from that point up until now, because um, I can truly say I, I ha I've already had a relationship with God. I grew up in Macedonia church, but for some reason I was angry. I didn't want to hear what a lot of people had al always told me, you know, God is not going to give you too much of what you can't bear. You know those sayings people say. Right. You don't want to do stuff like that. Um, but I had to make a decision spiritually of how I wanted to continue my life because it was just him and I. You know what I mean? Right. And when I decided to pick myself up from off the floor and put my right foot forward, my first step was back into Macedonia Church. Mm. And there was nothing, I didn't want to um, be mean or rude to people at that time. I was just angry. I was angry. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do things. I didn't want to go, I didn't even want to drive past Children's Hospital, okay? Well, I, I but, want to pause you for a minute before you, before, so did you have a mom's funeral at Macedonia? Yes. I okay, did. so you went back, you went back home, so to speak, for his yes. ongoing celebration. Absolutely. And then how long, you said after you picked yourself up, you went back to church, how long did you allow yourself to just be? Um, you know what, that's a good question. Um, it wasn't long at all after he passed him because you know how you feel something come over you and you're like, oh, I had that feeling. I knew it was the Lord talking to me mm -hmm. because there were things that would come over, come across my mind that Amon may have wanted. I wasn't able to provide to him. And one of those things was that martial arts that he wanted to take because I couldn't afford it because I was a single mom and that program was very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so by me not being able to offer him that and God waking me up saying, you're going to start this for kids in the hill. I knew that was nothing but God talking to, talking to me to get to my community. And that's where we are today. Um, when I started this organization in 2010, I only wanted to mend my broken heart, right? Mm. I didn't know it would turn into a nonprofit organization. I was just doing it out of the sorrow of losing my son. Let me stop you there. So, so a mom passed away in February of 2009. Mm -hmm. You went back to work, what, in, in March of 2009? No, I went back to work. Oh, girl, I got to share this with the ladies that are watching. When I lost my son, the why, and, and it's not even the why, it's just the way corporate policies are set. I'm just going to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Girl, they give you three days for immediate family. Three bereavement days. Three days. And, and it is worth noting for those of our listeners who aren't from Pittsburgh, um, yes. Child Care Partnership is the, what well, was the entity that um, supported families who needed assistance to pay for child care. Absolutely. So having lost a child, 
and then having to go back to work immediately mm-hmm. and, and deal with families and their children was mm-hmm. only an additional mm-hmm. piercing and and I'm sure struggle for you as you mm-hmm. work through the grief. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and my my dad, he said, come on, I'll take you down to human resource so we can talk with them and see how they might can help you. Mm-hmm. Well, the lady who was representing the, the YWCA, I don't, I don't know if she was just going through something personally, right? Because she's African American. I thought she would have more uh, compassion, um, but she was straight policy. Oh, you only get three days, and I'm like, how do you give somebody three days and they just lost their child? But the position that they work, like you said, Tiff, is serving women getting child care instead of her explaining you can go ahead and take an fmla family medical leave she just left it at three days and that was it so i made a decision to trust in the lord resign and take care of myself because like you always tell me and a lot of other women self-care is the key right yes I, I want to I want to pause right there and commend you, um, not because you know we are in this cancer where everyone is quitting their jobs, but to be brave and courageous enough and to trust God enough to say that my well being is more important than the resources that this job can provide because we have to remember God is our source, right? He gives us jobs that are a resource, but you don't need that resource if you're dead. That's right. And you don't need that resource if you really are um, leaning on the Lord, right? Right. Because he provides no matter what. Um, It may not be when we want it or how we like it, but he's going to make sure he makes a way for us. But I say all that to say, I can't um, say enough that when... I quit that job. Now, remind you, I just bought this house two years ago, right? Right. When I quit that job, the anxiety of telling them was crazy. I mean, God rest my soul, my dead soul. He just held me and just told me everything would be okay. But I was I was nervous. But um, I left the building. I say a week later, Maggie Jensen, who was the president, she called me personally, Tiff. Wow. And she um, gave her condolences and she told me, you know, we have another opportunity for you. Um, and that would be the family medical leave. And she explained the policy of what I needed to do that would uh, secure my position, how I needed to go to therapy, which was one of the requirements. And it was, it was really genuine. And to have a president from a organization at that level call you right. personally. I really felt like, you know, she cared for her employees. So that that was, I just smiled thinking about it because I thought I was toast, honey. <laughs> so did you go back then? So you I took did. the leave? I took the leave for one year. Wow. Got myself together. And after the leave, I was able to go back in the same position, making the same amount of money. But by that time, I had already began programming for martial arts in memory of a month. So I was kind of like working full time and then doing community programming mourning his his death. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting at Cuba and I would say, Lord, I really, really wish I could just do my own thing with this nonprofit. And a year later, after I went back to work, I stepped out on faith again. And I said, so, so wait, before you get to that step on faith, let's talk about what went on in that year while you took that FMLA. So okay. you already said you went to therapy. Yes, that was it. That's all I did. Therapy, um, you know, going to church talking with close friends and family about how I had been feeling during that time, which was, it was just horrible. I mean, I I never imagined being in that situation before. I I 
friends who had lost children before. Actually, one of my close friends had just lost her daughter um, who was murdered like six months before mom passed away. Lord. So I had, I had like a support system, but when you're going through, you really don't think people are supporting you because you're just going through at the time. Right. Um, so I had, uh, was his father still incarcerated when he passed away? Still incarcerated. My Lord. All the way five years later. Okay. So it's just me. First it was me and Amon. Now it's just me. You and the Lord. My sister, but you know, you Man, it was deep. It was it was so deep that I knew at that time that God had me in that day where he wanted me to be at peace and be still and get to really understand who he was yes. for me. For you, yes. And I I'm just man, too. He told me to get the tissue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and and I I have just seen the exponential growth, but I think that it's important to not take for granted where everything began because, you know, what you have built, the legacy that you are building um, in honor of Amon, and of course, everybody's going to know Amon, but everybody is also going to know Tyann Battle. Right. This legacy, the, the, the change and the impact that you're making um, was born out of your pain and loss. Right. And I don't want anybody to take for granted um, twofold. Not that um, I don't want anybody to take for granted your pain, but also how pivotal our pain can be to the purpose God has created us for. Right. So in the midst of you being willing to take this time to take care of yourself and make um, your health and your relationship with God a priority, then you start get the, getting these divine downloads about yes. being able to do for others what Amon was not able to experience. Absolutely. And I didn't I didn't even imagine where it was gonna go. I, I just, you know, I did it. I just did whatever that download directed me to do. Um I <laughs> it's so what was funny. the first step you took to get started? Um I actually share with my close girlfriends what I wanted to do. And one of my friends, before I even knew it would be a nonprofit, one of my friends said, you know, you should start a charity. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I wasn't thinking. I just want to do something. You know, I'm just going to do this karate class. I'm not looking to be no nonprofit charity, none of that. That always stuck in the back of my head, but I was so busy trying to make this work in memory of my son. So I had um, about six, six kids um, that started the first program, which was a martial arts program. I would go to the Hope Center, which is a part of Housing Authority in the Hill District, and they had a computer lab there. And I would, since I was laid off on the FMLA, I would go there and work like I was working a regular job. But I was working on how to start a program for community youth. Mm, okay. Uh, so I learned about, I already had administrative skills, so I knew how to keep the demographics and all that. I just didn't know about going to partnering agencies like the Hill House. Right. And asking for space. So right. fast forward, I, I went to the Blakey Center where the youth programming for Hill House was operating out of. And I met this she is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Tamika Mickle. I went there, and you know, when you don't have an appointment, people don't want to talk to you. So That's right. That's right. Big, time. <laughs> she let me in her office. She told me, sit down. She asked me if I wanted snacks. Didn't know me from a can of paint, okay? And I told her what I was looking to do. And before I can even finish 
said, she said, when you want to start? Mm. And I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> 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 I was just coming to see, you know. So by Tamika giving me that opportunity, uh, she really, um, she poured into me, Tiff. Not only for the simple fact that I'm here because I lost my son. She poured into me because she seen something in me that I didn't even see and how I would be a vessel for the kids in the hill. Yes. Um, so she gave you space? She gave me space at the Hill House Blakey building to run my karate class. I think I was on three days a week from six to eight. And when I tell you nothing but genuine uh, advising me, this is what you should do, Ty. How about if you try this? You know, it was hard. It was hard maintaining kids. It was hard getting parents to believe in me. And, you know, everybody on the Hill knew I lost my son and they felt bad for me. But if my son got homework, he ain't coming. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I just, want to thank Tamika Nickel for um, giving me that opportunity and from there it was just like kid after kid after kid they would come um, the Hill House shut down their youth programming due to funding so we had to move um, I moved the program to M and Rec Center and we lived there for seven years. So um, so at the point that you moved to Ammon, had you lost I mean, had you taken the second leap of faith to I leave did. your job? Not so much as leave my job. It was more so of I would say transitioning. You okay. know what I mean? Yes. I was transitioning because at that time I was I was tired I was just like I'm ready to do this because I had been meeting people I found a mentor who was already doing nonprofit at a higher level um so yes I quit my job uh I think that that next year I quit my job in 2012 okay I, I want to pause you there, though, because I think it's important what you have said was initially you said you just wanted to do something, right? Right. And because you were willing to take the first step when you got those downloads, and then you were willing to share your story with Tamika Mickle, and she saw what could come of your story once you really started doing the work, then everything else started to come to life and the vision just got bigger and God gave you the resources and the space to really begin to manifest that vision, right? And I want to give a special shout out to Tamika Mickle. I don't know her um, personally, but what I hear you saying that she did for you is what you have done for me oh. as I was starting when she thrives. So... I ple I appreciate that the the seed that she planted because now you're planting that same seed with me. So I just wanted to make sure I interjected that. But I want people to understand that sometimes we're so hesitant to tell our stories because we don't know how people will receive them, or we have some shame or feel fear or guilt, um, or we're concerned that no one will care. Right? right. It took one person. You yeah. talk to one person who opened the door. And now from that, from that place where you had six children, where you were still working your job, doing that after work, it, it turned into you needing a new space. So let's talk about what happened when you got to Ammon. Now you're making me cry. <laughs> now you started making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved to Ammon's and I thought, that was it. I was like, whoa, woo, I'm in, I'm in the heart of, you know, the community rec center. This is going to be much easier, you know? Right. And then you were like hood famous at that point, right? Yeah, I think I was. <laughs> I got a program at Amos. <laughs> like, she done made it. Yeah, right. And, you know, the Hill House was like the big pillar in our community. But when you yes. get that, like, oh, okay. Yeah. But it was 
it was not good for me at Admin's Tech. It was not good. It was it was so challenging because there were other organizations operating out of there. Um, and what they couldn't understand was I'm not in nonprofit for numbers. I'm not in this work to write a grant to say I got a hundred kids. That's not why I was doing the work it was more so again to keep my son's memory alive so it was like I would get the short end of the stick if I wanted to do something in a gym I would get a no something's going on it was so challenging it was it was not healthy and then it was not healthy towards the end of my seven years of living there and seven is completion right Mm. So towards the end, I had a funder uh, want to do a site visit. So I met him up at Ammon early morning, afternoon, about 10, 11 ish. Well, at that time, it's like older guys hooping in the, the gym, you know, mm-hmm. not too many kids because kids are in school. Well, as I'm giving him a tour of the facility, some guy walks by smelling like nothing but strong marijuana. And I knew it was time for me to make an executive decision. Mm. Say that executive. Yes, that was my first executive decision. (laughs) And my board, um, they were so proud of me because we were actually growing within the foundation world. Mm -hmm. Um, Our mission was being known who we were and what we were doing. Um, so, uh, Takara, my teaching artist, she was like, well, Miss Powell, why don't you reach out to the Pittsburgh Public Schools? Maybe we can get into a school. So I did that. And, um, I was first turned down by the principal at Miller School. And then, you know, once somebody tells you, no, you want to go even harder. Now, now I'm getting mad. Now I'm angry at this point because somebody will let me have this program in a nice place. So it was a counselor, look at God, a counselor calls my office and says, um, one of my parents had told me their kid was in your program up at Ammon School, and I wanted to know if we can meet, because I teach down at Pittsburgh Wild. And I'm like, what? Thank you, we can meet. What do you want to meet today? <laughs> but make a long story short, we met. He introduced me to Mrs. Henderson, who was the principal at the school, and you would never believe he got moved to another school after that, and I moved my program into WOW uh, that next school year. No, that next summer, because we started in the summer, and we were there for two years, and it was just the best thing for us. So I, I want to be, I want the audience to be clear and say, and hearing that you went from three children or six children, right? Absolutely. To um, having a space that- in the community, in another community center at some point, um, um, getting your 501c3, running that program in an un- another center, then getting a partnership with the Pittsburgh Public Schools. All of that happened over the course of seven to nine years, right? I would say, so I got my, oh gosh, we received our 501c3 in 2011, which we started in 10. We got our uh, designation in 11, and then we were just doing programming from 11 to 2018. At Ammons, you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Not at Ammons. From 11. You've been, you still doing programming. I've been doing programming. It's I was, I left Ammons in 2017. I left okay. Ammons. You left Ammons in 2017. So it's been, like I said, I've experienced, I've watched the exponential growth, but I want you to go back just for a moment and talk about um, the grassroots effort yeah. that started, like yeah. how when you were still at work, how you started, before you had a funder to take on tour, how were you you funding um, that that first martial arts class? How were you funding the expanded program at Ammons before you even had a funder 
to support your program? So from 2010 to 2014, I had no funders. I'm gonna make that clear. Absolutely, positively none. Nobody would entertain nothing from me. And that was a time where I was really like, is this for me or should I, should I quit my job? And now <laughs> I was, mm. you know, but grassroots fundraising for nonprofits is a grind, a hustle. You have to have it in you to get up every day to figure out how you're going to make it work. I sold triangle hoagies. We had car washes. We ordered uh, cards, let the kids make cards and sold them. I mean, we would sell some old night tennis shoes if you gave them to us, okay? <laughs> so I, I just, yes, I think it's important for, for our listeners to understand that even when you recognize the power of your story, even when you begin to embrace and work toward the vision that God is giving you, you have to keep telling your story when you selling a hoagie or when you're trying to get a $100,000 check, right? You have to have that same dedication, right? Like you said, when you get a no, you got to go harder because as you continue to plant those seeds, right? So four years, nobody had time for time besides the people who wanted a hoagie, a car wash, some Pittsburgh popcorn. Those people that were like, oh, she lost her son. Oh, let me give her five or 10. But I knew God had something bigger for us. So I'm, I'm going back to these foundations now. Now I'm like, all right, now I got like five years under my belt. What are y'all going to do for these right. kids? Now I'm now I'm speaking up. I ain't that soft. But now I'm getting frustrated. So now and, uh, you have more confidence, right? I do. I you do. built up that I took, a, I took a leap of faith and I said I'm going to submit a letter of inquiry to the Heinz Endowment because everybody kept telling me, oh, Heinz Endowment, they fund arts, you should apply. So um, I did. And at that time, um, I was a little nervous, but I ended up getting a call back. Um, And I got a call back from Justin Lang, who was a program manager at that time. And he actually, that was 2014. He said, you know, I received your letter. He said, but I also want to see if you want to be a part of this cohort that I'm putting together for um, transforming, transformative artists in distressed communities or something like that. It was about um, how we can give our feedback of our underserved communities and what we need from artists to actually run a quality arts program. Mm. That program was the best thing I could have ever gotten into because I I met so many artists, I met so many uh, leaders in nonprofit, and they also took us out to out. I went to New York to see other community arts organizations like ACH, like I wanted ACH to be, should I say? And right, because we did. You didn't mention that you went from martial arts to doing visual arts programming, right? You expanded. I expanded. I I went from karate to dance. We even had a Girl Scout troop at one point. Wow. I met Takara and she started art. So we, once I got in that cohort, I started to see what it could really be as a 501c3 tip. And I'm telling you, the Heinz Endowment, they, they set the snowball. It was like a snowball effect after they granted us our first grant. It looked like the Hounds and the Heinz Endowment started a snowball effect. The yeah. snowball effect started when you were at Ammons in that computer lab, still grieving, still going to therapy, taking care of your son and recognizing that God yeah. had a use for your story, right? Yeah. So 2009, Amon passes away. And in 2020, <laughs> well, let's back up. In 2019, 
Yeah, let's talk about 19. The very the very first place where you went to oh. talk to somebody about where to start and how to start and where to get a space. Can we talk about now how ACH Clear Pathways Home is the Hill House? ACH mm -hmm. Clear Pathways the Hill House belongs to ACH Clear Pathways. Can we talk about that? How okay. God works? <laughs> Right, and oh. this is why this is so important to recognize how when we share our stories, we don't only set ourselves free, we set other people free. The The fact that you were willing to tell one person after another after another, even when you were selling a hoagie about the importance of preserving a mom's memory, but creating opportunity for other children. I don't even know how many how many lives you've changed, how many families you've changed. And and this is this the snowball is still building. How does it feel now to be in the hill house? I, I mean to be running the hill house. Oh my gosh. Is this Zoom going to be shown with my expression? Because I'm like teasing from ear to ear. <laughs> speechless, right? Still speechless. I am uh, glory to God. I don't mean to offend anyone and who they believe in, but man, um, 29th, <laughs> I'm going to go back to 2018 when. I purchased, no, 20, 2018, my board said, Tyann, go out into the community and see if you can find a banded building or some land that we can build an art center. We found some land on Heron Avenue, right? You remember? Yes, I do. We found the land on Heron Avenue in May of 2018. We closed the loan with Bridgeway Capital. We found a funder to pay the loan off. So the land is ours. Boom. So now we're working with architects. To build an art to, center. Yeah, to build. From the with, ground up. Yeah, yeah, on this land. For programming that, that started with six children and selling hoagies. Absolutely. <laughs> So we, um, we have the land, we work with this architect. We get all the way up to schematic design in November of 2018. And after the holiday break, Tiff, we come back, what, January 2nd, everybody goes back to work. Well, I say by the end of that week, I get a call from the executive director or the president of the board of the Hill House. And she, mm -hmm. she said, hi, Tyann, this is Miss Emma Lucas Darby. And I'm like, oh, I know her, but, you know, we ain't never talked on the phone. How does she even get that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I forgot I had a website, you know. <laughs> so I said. Oh, hi, Miss Emma. Happy New Year. She's like, oh, this is going to be a, a, new, a happy new year for you. I wanted to know if we can sit down with some of your board members to have a conversation. And I'm in my head like, okay, because I had just, we, we all knew what the Hill House was going through at that time, right? Mm -hmm. So I had this big lump in my throat because what is she about to ask me to buy the Hill House? I can't afford the Hill House. <laughs> But I'm just but God, but God. So we did that, and um, you know, Frank, my vice president, and how crazy he is. We're in the meeting, and they say, "Yes, we would like to offer you guys the Kaufman Center." And Frank put his head down on the table, face first, and said, "He had his finger up, like, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute." You mean to tell me you're asking us to buy the Kaufman Center? And they were like, yeah, would you be interested? And at that time, I'm in my head like, no, because we got that land. We're going <laughs> <do it. laughs> to build on that land we just got, right? Then I went home. I started praying. I, you know, I was just, I had something come over me. I was just, I don't know what to do. What do I do? Am I doing the right thing? I'm nervous. We don't have money. All of those emotions was just rolling mm -hmm. through me. And one of my mentors, 
<laughs> Scott Lammy from UPMC said, Tyann, I want to just let you know this is nothing but divine intervention. Woohoo! Now, you know, my dad had just passed. Right. 2019 was Amon's graduating year of high school, Tiffany. Right. So from seven years old to 17, 18 years old, graduating from high school, why not you, Tyann? And I said, okay, well, I'm going to go for it and just see what happens. And we started the process. So now ACH is housed in the Hill House. We moved, we moved out of Wild School in July. We moved out of my office down at NeighborWorks in July. We were under a lease agreement with the Hill House from July to December, which I had, which the board, I ain't gonna say me because this is a team thing, organization, board worked from July to December and we were able to raise the funds to purchase the Kaufman Center. Wow, so now what about your land? So the land is in the backpack of ACH Clear Pass. Well, won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> and God is so good because there is a true angel out there that has been cutting the grass on that land for the past two years and I can't figure out who it is but I just keep praying and saying thank you <laughs> yes yes making so, sure that the land remains fertile and ready for whenever God decides it is time know. I don't know what it is or what it will be meant for, um, but to say the least, I am free. You are I free am for sure, free. and you wear freedom so well, but I, I want to ask you this, and I know um, you don't have to go into specific detail, but I know that even when we get to the point when we are free, when we are knee deep in doing the work that God is telling us to do and we begin to see things come to fruition, there are yeah. challenges, right? Absolutely. Sometimes, <laughs> opposition. Opposition. Some, yes. Sometimes those challenges and that opposition comes in the form of people who <laughs> uh, we would think would support us, right? Or be happy about the work that we're doing. And, uh, and, it, and when that doesn't happen, it often comes as a surprise, right? We, we know as women of God that opposition is to be expected, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it doesn't challenge us, right? And I know for myself um, and, you know, in having conversations with you that sometimes when the opposition rises up, it causes us to second guess, right? We start to wonder, like, hey, is, do I have the money? Am I supposed to be doing this? Is this really for me, right? right? We start to feel like imposters. And I know for, um, especially black women in leadership, imposter syndrome can be debilitating, right? Because there's so much um, working against us. So I want to, if you're willing here, you share a little bit about your experience with that opposition, how from time to time you might experience imposter syndrome and how you break yourself out of it and keep pushing um hmm. so you know we talked about the history and how it was started and uh, you know friends start out with you oh i want to help you this and that then they see some growth and then they drop off then you get somebody else that see the growth and they want to come on board to help you and then they drop off but at the end of the day, Tiff, and this is for every female out here listening, if, if you don't feel it in your spirit that you are who you are, mm. you are who you are. God has provided the blessing to you because he had already had it written, right? Yes, before he formed you in your mother's womb. And if we 
don't follow his direction and be obedient in what he wants us to do, we're always going to be a mess. Mm. So with that being said, I had to leave some friends behind. Yes. I had to remove myself from some family members. I had to meet new people that I was intimidated because of their title. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, they're the VP of this or they're the uh, CFO of that, but they're just regular human beings. That's right. Um, you know, I went to college and I didn't even share that, but my I went to college fairly late at Point Park and I went for Saturday classes because I was a single mom. Right. And one passed away my last semester at Point Park. So that right there was a, a challenge because guess what I studied at Point Park? <laughs> Organizational leadership. Mm, didn't even know that you were preparing for such a time. Oh, man, Lord. I, look, the advisor, I don't even know what she asked me. Do you want to be a boss? I think she asked me something stupid. Like, do you want to be a boss or you want to have your own business? Something stupid like that. That's what made me take the course. Well, I thought that's what made me take the course. <laughs> but it was nothing but God setting me up. But um, when I got into this space here at the Kaufman Center, there was so many um, thorns that was thrown my way. Mm. Uh, that I thought would have my back strong black women running organizations that I thought would be mentors just throwing straight shade like we was in Miami somewhere okay <laughs> I'm like well lady I'm trying to learn from you like what is going on here <laughs> but like my pastor B shout out to pastor Brian Edmund if you're not anchored in the Lord I don't know what to tell you that's the only thing I could tell you mm. because it makes everything perfect. And now that I look back, all those times I cried, didn't know what to do, missing my son, he lives. Yeah. He lives through these kids and these families in the hill. And I want to do the best that I can as a, a human being, a mother, a friend, a leader to make sure that the legacy of not only the Hill House, but ACH continues to move on within the arts. And um, I'm going to try not to listen to the worldly views and stay in my spiritual breath. Does that make sense? It definitely does make sense. And you just, you just exude the peace of staying in that in that realm and being anchored in God. And so um, I don't want to take up all your time because I know you're a really big deal, CEO running this big organization. Uh, 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 <laughs> and I want to be respectful of your time. But before I let you go, I do want to ask you two questions. Um, sure. One being for the woman who is struggling with the fear or the guilt or the uncertainty of whether it'll work or whether she should share her story, be it to start an organization, to write her book or a business, what would you say to her if she's struggling with the unknown or not knowing if she could do it, whatever it is? Uh... First, I would say, do it. And I say that because if you, excuse my language, pussyfoot around your goal, you're never going to accomplish it. So one, take that fear, put it in your back pocket. Two, stand up straight and stay consistent with your goal. Because once you stay consistent, that's just like making pancakes. You consistent on making them pancakes every Saturday for your family. They come out better and better and more golden brown and fluffy every time you put that spatula. T- I, <laughs> that's right. I know. I love a pancake I, on a Saturday morning too. <laughs> stay consistent and put that fear in your back pocket. It's never going to go away. I right. have fear every day 
wake up. But I know that being professional one and being consistent too will take you far because nobody can take away your skills. And you, we, we learn every day and you just get better and better at whatever it is you may want to do or is out there trying to do. I love that. Put your finger in your back pocket. I love yeah. that. It's never going to go away. Do you, do your fear ever go away, Tiff? No. Mm -mm. no. <laughs> Unfortunately not. No. It doesn't, but we can overcome that fear. We can't. I, I mean, I feel the fear and do it anyway. Yep. That's it. That's just like when you know you got Kenny Will, you getting on a still phantom. You know you scared when you got on it. Now you on it, it's time to go. <laughs> you can't get off. They done locked you in, strapped you in. Now it's going up the hill and you nervous about going down. You can't get off. Wow. That is me. And I'm I'm open to talking to any female. You know me, Tiff. I'm I just want people to know who I am. I'm not that bougie type of person. I'm just tying from the hill, born and raised, genuine, cool, and want to help people. So that is your heart. Definitely a servant leader. So you can, if you would, share um, one piece of advice, a quote, a scripture that might plant a seed for another woman as she grows into being free. Yep. You have one? I do have one, and you know it's my favorite. So Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Amen. Like clear pathways? Yes, okay. like clear pathways. Come <laughs> on. All right, <laughs> tell the people how they can get in touch with Tyann Battle um, and ACH Clear Pathways. Your, your social media handles, I'll make sure the website is in the show notes, but what are the social media handles? Where can the people make a donation if they okay. care to do so? Yes, honey. So achclearpathways.org is our website. It has our mailing address. It also has a donation tab if you would like to donate through the website. We are on social media for Facebook at ACH Clear Pathways um, and also Instagram at ACH underscore clear underscore pathways. I think I said okay. that right. Yeah. And then we are a contributing agency through United Way of Allegheny County. Our uh, United Way number is 105-32885. And if your corporation or business is having a campaign, you can donate to us through United Way at that time. Um, but thank you, Tiffany, for giving me this opportunity. And if people would like to rent the uh, Elsie Hillman Auditorium at the Kaufman Center, they would um, give us a call at 412 815-0228. Come on with that. Love it. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you for um, taking the time to share and um, bless people with your journey and your, your spirit and your wisdom. And um, I'm going to just go ahead and say that they can look forward to the book version of this story coming to a shelf near their, them soon. But for now, they can you to do your that. story in action via the work that you do with ACH Clear Pathways. I love you and I, I thank you. you and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Good luck, everybody, and um, be free. Yes. Woo. Well, there you have it, sis. Put your fear in your back pocket and be free. And yes, if you're ready to do just that, then I have just the opportunity for you. You can grab the link in the show notes and join the She's Free Challenge. The She's Free Challenge is a for the woman just like you who's ready to set yourself and others free by sharing your story. And you can join us at bit.ly slash she's free. Bit.ly slash she's free. We kick off Monday, June 22nd, 2020. And I want to see you 
in this sacred space with us. Bit.ly slash sheets free. And last but not least, if you have not already, please do grab the link uh, or wherever you're listening. Click the link that says leave a review, drop a rating. Let other beacons know that you've been blessed by this podcast. In doing so, you create an opportunity for them to do the same. Stay tuned for our second sheet free guest tomorrow. She will bless you. Later.